Texas State University. Texas State University Counseling Center. Um, so today I'm doing a webinar on um, basically just teaching some, some, um, some coping skills for anxiety. Um, so last year I did a webinar on anxiety and it was mostly psychoeducation based. There'd be some psychoeducation here, but the main purpose of this webinar is for you to practice, practice some, some coping skills. Um, so we'll do some relaxation. We'll do some. Um, we'll do a mindfulness-based skill. We'll do a um, a self-compassion skill, and all of these have been researched um, in evidence-based ways of you know helping people um, manage anxiety. Um, so, like I said, the goal. So you know, experience basically learn why you experience anxiety briefly, and then we go into um, the coping skills. So, you know, you. The people that get the most out of this webinar is uh, the people that will actually like just sit back and relax and actually engage in some of these coping skills that we'll run through. Um, and we'll try to get through as many as possible within an hour. So before we start, though, you know, I think it's important to, to understand that your anxiety is your friend. Um, some personal disclosure is like I struggled. I have I struggled with anxiety when I was younger, and I will still say like anxiety is still something um, that you know can be a struggle with me at times. Um, and one thing I've noticed about you know the clients I've worked with who struggle with anxiety and just anxious people in general is that there's some shame and guilt that comes with um, uh, feeling anxious. Uh, it seems like a lot of my students feel shame, they feel guilt, they feel embarrassed about their anxiety to the point that they wanna, they wanna hide, hide it basically from other people. They feel it's something to, to, to hide because they feel because of their anxiety that they're, they feel weak and defective in some way. When in fact, really everybody experiences anxiety. You know, when you go to Walmart, that person you you walk by an owl has experienced anxiety, or you go to the cash register, probably they register they're, the person at the cash register has um, experienced anxiety. Your peers that you walk by in the quad probably has experienced anxiety. Everybody experiences anxiety to a different degree, but anxiety is part of being human. It's it's part of um, what makes us human. Just like when we feel anger, when we feel you know happiness, when we feel sad, you know, our emotions are, serve a purpose. And anxiety's purpose is to, you know, help us fight or flight. We feel anxiety and we feel stress. Um, uh, these are acting, uh, what we call action emotions. They, they, they cause us to act. And that's what your anxiety is there. It's there, it's there to protect you. It's there to keep you feel safe. So when my my students come in with the goals of wanting to rid themselves of anxiety. One, that's not possible, right? That's like, you know, you, sometimes you can't rid yourself totally of, of anxiety. And two, that wouldn't be beneficial to you too because anxiety is there to protect us. So anxiety is all about fight or flight also. So that's something to remember is that your anxiety is driven by the fight or flight system. Um, that, or and nowadays it's called the fight, flight or freeze system. Um, so more about the fight or flight system um, and, and as such, it's important to know that the, our anxiety and stress comes out from that fight or flight system. And this is all, this all comes off of what we call the autonomic nervous system. And that's the part of the nervous system which persons have no control over. It, it governs such bodily functions such as our heart rate, our breathing and digestion our blood pressure, and so on. So those are things that you don't have a conscious, you don't put forth conscious effort to control. Your body does, them, does it automatically. And part of that autonomic nervous system is what we call the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system is initiated when our brain perceives something in our environment to be threatening or our brain perceives something in our environment to be stressful or, you know, you know, or if we're having like thoughts that cause stress or, you know, we're thinking about future stressors and as such. 
that's going to initiate what is called, like I said, the sympathetic nervous system. So that fight or flight response that's initiated by the sympathetic nervous system um, it responds to stresses, it responds to like when we feel in danger and so on. And what ends up happening is this body, this, this chain of bodily and um, you know, chemical reactions that happen in the body when our brain senses um, you know, uh, stresses in our environment, which causes this release of hormones um, that, to help you respond to stressors. So um, you know, these hormones, um, you think of, you probably all have heard of cortisol is one of them. Um, and then what we call catecholamines uh, horm uh, hormones, which are like adrenaline and noradrenaline, um, they're responsible for those symptoms that you experience when you're anxious and stressed. Um, they're responsible for the, you know, the increased heart rate, the increased blood pressure. Um, the, all those, those hormones are trying to do, they're trying to help you fight off or run away from whatever's stressing you out or was, whatever's um, you know, causing um, danger in whatever. Oh, oh sorry. Not share my screen. I just noticed people that I'm not sharing my screen, so let me share my screen again. Okay, there we go. Sorry, guys, I, I didn't notice that I wasn't sharing my screen there. So let's get back to where it was. All right, so going back to this. So, so the release of hormones are, is there to help you respond to stressors in your, in your environment. So then the parasympathetic nervous system is the part of the nervous system that, um, the part of your nervous system that induces relaxation. Okay, is there to re induce relaxation and return your body after your body has been through the sympathetic nervous system? This this system is there to return your body back to homeostasis. It's back to re return your body back to normal functioning, functioning back to uh, you know your day to day op your body to routine day to day operations. So the coping skills that we're going to go through. Um, the coping skills that we're going to go through are there to help you, in, you know, in, initiate the parasympathetic nervous system. And when that happens, those, those symptoms that you experience that associate with anxiety, they would decrease, right? So like I said, those coping skills we're about to go through is going to help, you know, turn on that parasympathetic nervous system, which is going to shut down that sympathetic nervous system, letting your brain know that I'm not in danger. Okay, so a little bit more about the symptoms that you experience. So like I said, those symptoms that you experience when you get anxious, they're part of that fight or flight system. They're part of that sympathetic nervous system. Probably these are some that you recognize um, that you may experience. A lot of people don't realize that these symptoms that you experience actually have serve a, they have an evolutionary purpose. They have an adaptive function. They're not as adaptive anymore. Um, and in fact, now, now in modern times, like these symptoms actually kind of get in the way and cause us to feel overwhelmed and cause us to experience more anxiety, more so than help us out. But if you go back, I'm talking about prehistoric, you know, prehistoric uh, ages, these, the prehistoric age, for example, when, they were, when our environment was more physically threatening, these symptoms actually were, were helpful. Nowadays, though, we still experience physical threats but our, our stressors and what makes us anxious typically are more so like psychologically, emotionally, and financial stressors, which these don't help with. Um, so if you're thinking of in terms of like adaption and, and, and evolutionary terms, um, you know, uh, for example, increasing uh, like people sweat, some people sweat when they get anxious. How does that help if something was physically threatening in your environment one, it helps you cool down. And if something is chasing you, is after you, um, the sweat makes your, your skin more slippery. So like if a bear is chasing you, for example, and you start sweating, your body does that to, to, to make it less likely that the bear will, um, you know, get a hold of you. Um, some people, 
experience an increase in muscle tone. What would that be for? Why is your body like if something was like in your environment that was physically dangerous, your, your, your muscle strength increases because your, your body is wanting you to fight off that threat or run as fast as possible. So, you know, fight it off, you know, so that you can get away or run as fast as possible. Some people experience like an uneasiness in their stomach. They start to get nauseous. The reason why that happens is your body is diverting energy away from your digestive system so that it can be diverted to other areas of your body that are more useful in helping you, you know, um, get away from whatever's physically uh, dangerous in your environment. Um, some people, um, you know, I know I've talked to some people, this doesn't happen to me when I get anxious, but I know some people when they get anxious, their, their, their hands and their feet get cold. The reason why is your body is diverting blood away from your skin to the, to the deeper tissue in your muscles, you know, to give those muscles more energy and such. So those, those symptoms that you experience, they're actually a one, that's your body trying to help you out, actually. Um, it's just in nowadays, in modern days, it's not as, uh, it's not adaptive. So now let's practice. So like I said, so you're going to get the best, uh, the most out of this webinar if you actually in, if practice these skills. These are not all the coping skills available to someone that's experiencing anxiety. Um, these are just some of them. Um, and the such, not everything works for everybody. This is something I tell my students too, is not everything works for everybody. That's why we, we say you're building an anxiety toolkit. Not every tool fits everybody. You're trying to find what tool fits you and, and the such. So these are some examples. And if, if you find something that works, um, you, know, um, you know, I encourage you to practice it. You know? So in the chat box um, here uh, during this webinar, Maybe, you know, if you if you haven't if you had a good experience, like you can type in your experience that you've that you've had with this particular um, um, coping skill and and so on. Like so, it's just basically use the chat box to share your experiences. Or if you have questions, I'm trying to answer questions at the end if we have time and, and so on. So the first one we're going to do is uh, deep breathing. So deep breathing is, is this is something simple. That can be used um, like simple, you know, bef before you go into the, in something that's going to cause you a lot of anxiety or stress. This could be something you can do real quickly. And basically, you're just regulating your breathing, which is sending messages to your brain to turn that sympathetic nervous system out. Remember, we're trying to induce that parasympathetic nervous system um, so that you can get a sense of relaxation in the such. This particular uh, breathing exercise I'm going to do is called the three-part breath. There's different ones like squared breathing and, and the such that you could try out, uh, but this is a pretty quick one. So what you're going to do is you're just you're going to place your your hand on your belly without pressing on it. Close your eyes, and I just want you to feel your belly rise with each inhale and release on each exhale. So feel your belly rise with each inhale and release on each exhale. So I want you to begin to inhale deeply. As you inhale, feel your belly expand, puff out your belly like a balloon. And then exhale very slowly. Make the exhale slower than your inhale. Continue to exhale completely drawing your belly in. Let's do it again. So inhale deeply. Taking in air. Filling up your belly with air. Continue to take in more air. Fill up your chest. Feel your chest expand. And then exhale slowly. Relax your chest. And slowly draw your belly in. Let's do it one more time. 
So to begin, inhale, to inhale deeply again, fill up your belly and chest with air. Continue to inhale up into your collarbones, feel your collarbones rise, and then slowly exhale. Relax your collarbones, relax your chest, and draw your belly in. And then return your breath to normal. So think about like, what was your experience with that one? You know, and I like to, uh, I'd be interested in reading like what, what, your, what your experience was with that one. That's a really simple one to do, a really basic one. Usually that's one of the first things that a clinician will go to in, in, in helping student, um, clients you know, um, regulate and control is their breathing rate. That's, that's a simple way of turning on that, that parasympathetic nervous system. Once again, not everything works for everybody. If that form of breathing didn't, didn't work for you, I, I encourage you to try squared breathing in the such. So the next one um, we're going to do is called progressive muscle relaxation. So this one, we're going to go through, we're going to actually go through each muscle group in the body. And we're going to focus on tensing that muscle group and untensing that muscle group. When people get anxious, one of the more, most common things, symptoms that happen is that increased muscle tension. So once again, if you learn how to untense those muscle groups that are tense when you're anxious, you're sending messages to your brain, turn the flight, fight or flight system off. This is one that um, may not be as convenient to use as the deep breathing, because this one takes about 20 minutes to do, um, at least initially. Now, the more you do, to, do this one, the more you practice it, the quicker you become. And what I want you to do is while you're doing this exercise, pay attention to what parts, what muscle groups in your body are tense. Because when you're anxious, Let's say you're in your you're you're in your class and you're feeling your class and you're feeling really anxious. You might not have time to go through each and every muscle group, but you can go to that one that's most commonly um, tense for you um, when you're anxious and focus on untensing it. So let's do this one. So I want you to get in a relaxed position. If you're in your bed, lay down. If you're in a chair, you know um, you know sit comfortably in your chair. You can listen to well. You can. Um, hopefully be in a quiet spot. And I want you to close your eyes and I want you to focus on your breathing. Just focus on your breath. And I'm gonna read you something, and then we're gonna start. Just close your eyes. Progressive muscle relaxation is an exercise that relaxes your mind and body by progressively tensing and relaxing muscle groups throughout your entire body. You will tense each muscle group, but without straining, and then suddenly release the tension and feel the muscle relax. You will tense each muscle for about five seconds. If you have any pain or discomfort at any of the targeted muscle groups, feel free to omit that step. Throughout this exercise, you may visualize the muscles tensing and a wave of relaxation flowing over them as you release that tension. So allow your attention to focus only on your body. If you begin to notice your mind wandering, bring it back to the muscle you're working on. Now let's take a deep breath through your stomach. And I want you to hold that for a few seconds. And exhale slowly. So let's take a deep breath again. And exhale slowly. And as you breathe, notice your stomach rising and your lungs filling with air. So let's take a deep breath again. And then exhale. 
Imagine the tension in your body being released and flowing out of your body. I want you to feel your body already relaxing. As we go through each step, remember to keep breathing like this, taking deep breaths in and then exhale. Now let's begin. Tighten the muscles in your forehead by raising your eyebrows as high as you can. So we're gonna hold for about five seconds. And release, feeling that tension fall away. Now I want you to smile widely, feeling your mouth and cheeks tense. And we're gonna hold for about five seconds. And release, appreciating the softness in your face. Next, tighten your eye muscles by squinting your eyelids tightly shut. And release. Now be careful with this one, but I want you to gently, and I say gently, pull your head back as if to look at the ceiling. You're gonna hold this for five seconds. And release. Feel the tension melting away. Now let's focus on your breathing again. So let's take a deep breath in. Remember, fill up your belly like a balloon, up into the collarbones, your chest, and exhale. Remember, make your exhale slower than your inhale. I want you to let go, imagine yourself letting go of all your stress and anxiety. As you breathe in, take a deep breath in. And out. Now tightly, but without straining, I want you to clench your fist. And you're gonna hold this, this position until I say stop. And release. Now you're going to flex your biceps. So you're going to make them uh, make a muscle basically with your biceps. You may even visualize that muscle tightening and we're gonna hold for about five seconds. And release. 
enjoy that feeling of relaxation. Now tighten your triceps by extending your arms out and locking your elbows. So we're gonna hold this for about five seconds. And release. Now lift your shoulders up as if they can touch your ears. So be careful with this one also. Lift your shoulders up as if they can touch your ears and you're gonna hold this for five seconds. And quickly release, feeling their heaviness. Let's do this one again, because a lot of people, when they get anxious and stressed, there's a lot of tension in that area. So you're gonna lift your shoulders up as if they could touch your ears. And then hold that for five seconds. And quickly release, feeling their heaviness. Next, you're gonna tighten your chest by taking a deep breath in. So take a deep breath in and you're gonna hold this for five seconds. And exhale, blowing out all the tension and anxiety that you experience. Now let's move to your midsection. Let's tighten the muscles in your stomach by sucking in your stomach. So we're gonna hold that for about five seconds. So suck in your stomach. And release. So with this next step, once again, be careful with it, but gently arch your lower back. So you're gonna arch your lower back and you're gonna hold this for five seconds. And relax. Do this one again, because once again, this is a common area of tension with people when they're anxious and stressed. So gently arch your lower back. And relax. Now we're gonna to move to your lower body. So I want you to tighten your thighs by pressing your knees together as if you were holding something between them. So hold this for five seconds. And 
and release. Now you're gonna flex your feet by pulling your toes towards you and feeling te the tension in your calves. So hold for about five seconds. And relax. Now you're gonna curl your toes under, tensing your feet. So curl your toes under, tensing your feet, and let's hold for about five seconds. And release. Now I want you to imagine, close your eyes, imagine a wave of relaxation slowly spreading through your body, beginning at your head and going all the way down to your feet. Starting at your, like I say, your forehead, going to your eyes, your mouth and cheeks, down to your shoulders, through your biceps and triceps, through your hands, going up back through your triceps and biceps, to your chest. And that, imagine this way, I want you to visualize a wave of relaxation going from your chest to your stomach, midsection area. down to your thighs, down your legs to your feet, and out. Feel the weight of your relaxed body. And breathe in and out. Breathe in. Out and in and out. So that's progressive muscle relaxation. I'd be curious to you know to know um, how that experience was for you. Um, someone wrote, um, let's see. Uh, for deep breathing, it seems like someone had wrote, you know, it helped them focus and control the moment, you know. A lot of these skills are, will help with that. A lot of these skills also uh, could be considered like mindfulness-based skills too, because they help you focus on the present and the moment. And what we know about mindfulness or any practice that helps you stay in the present, it reduces that anxiety and that stress um, that comes with um, us focusing on like future events or past events, those are, those are things we can't control. What we can control is the moment. Uh, like, so our, the, the, what's happening in the moment, which may be our breathing, which may be our muscle tension and, and so on. Um, so I'd be curious to, in the chat, you know, write down how, how was that experience for you? Maybe it, it's not, a, it wasn't a good experience for you. Uh, some people have trouble with progressive muscle relaxation because it can take pretty long. And some people um, may struggle with um, staying still or, you know, uh, focusing for that long, you know, their mind may wonder. So it might not be, they might not benefit as much from that. So the next one is more of a, like a, a, a guided relaxation, um, visual relaxation exercise. Um, so let's go into that one.
This one um, typically guys may take about 10 to 15 minutes too. Um, this is something you may wanna use some, maybe some nice soothing music too. Um, like, so when you, this, this would be something I would do when I wake up before class, maybe set aside 10 to 15 minutes to go through this, uh, this exercise. This could also be something you do, you know, in class, you know, uh, you might not can do it for 10 to 15 minutes, but this is something um, you can do also, you know, when you're in, in, in class or, you know, uh, whatever. Um, you may also want to set an alarm, guys, just in case you lose track of time or you fall asleep. This is another one. Uh, this is one you might actually fall asleep on. So it might be helpful to set an alarm if, if you if you're kind of pressed for time. Um, and that way you can be more able to relax and kind of let go because you're not focusing on what your schedule looks like and such. So what you need is some quiet time with this one, some privacy, and also maybe a, a, an alarm clock perhaps. Once again, I'd be interested in knowing what your experience is with this one too. So use the chat, um, um, the chat box. So close your eyes. Once again, we're close. We're doing a lot of closing eyes here. So I want you to close your eyes and get into a comfortable position. And let's use deep breathing again. So let's let's focus on our breathing. And I want you to breathe in peace and breathe out stress and anxiety. Breathe in peace. and breathe out stress. Once you get to a relaxed state, I want you to begin to envision yourself in the midst of the most relaxing environment you can imagine. So for, for some, this would be floating in the clear waters off a remote tropical island for others, this might be sitting by a fire in a secluded snow cabin, deep in the woods, sipping hot cocoa, while wrapped in a plush blanket. For me, this would be like sitting near a beach or something, you know, um, midday and such. So I want you to envision yourself in the most relaxing environment you've ever been to or one you wanna to go to. As you imagine your scene, I want you to try to involve all of your senses. What does it look like? So think about like, what does it look like? What type of sights do you see? What type of objects, what type of color, colors and patterns do you see in the scene? How does it feel? How does it feel being in this scene that you created in your head? Do you feel calm? Do you feel relaxed? Do you feel happy, joy? Maybe you feel eager, excited. Hopefully it's a positive emotion. So what do you feel while being in this, this relaxing environment? What do you smell in this relaxing environment? What type of odors are hitting your nose right now? What type of aromas do you smell? Hopefully it's something pleasant. What do you smell?
What do you hear? What type of sounds do you hear? Do you hear the roar of a fire, the splash of a waterfall, or the sounds of chipper birds? What do you hear? If I was at the beach, I'd be hearing the, the sound of the waves crashing the shoreline and leaving the shoreline. I may hear people laughing and enjoying themselves. What do you hear? What do you feel texture wise? I want you to imagine you're in this environment and you go to touch something or pick it up. I want you to pick it up and touch it and what does it feel like? Does it feel soft? Does it feel rough? Is it, is it really gritty? What, is it, what does it feel like? If I was at the beach, I uh, would imagine I wouldn't have any shoes on. I have my feet in the warm snow, feeling the grittiness of the, the grains of sand in between my toes. What does it feel like? Is it cold? Is it warm being there? I want you to make this vision so real you can even taste it. You should involve all of your senses so that you make this, this scene so real that you can taste it. You can stay here for as long as you like. Enjoy your surroundings and let yourself be far from what stresses you. When you are ready to come back to reality, count back from 10. And tell yourself that when you get to one, you will feel serene and alert and can enjoy the rest of your day. When you return, you will feel more calm and refreshed. Yeah, so that's more of a visual relaxation uh, skill. Um, this is a really good technique to help control panic attacks um, and just senses of panic and anxiety attacks and such. And it's it, basically you're creating a safe space, a space that makes you in your mind, right? And that's always available to you. You know, your your images in your your mind and and the such, that's something you can always go to. So when you're feeling scared, when you're feeling fear, when you're feeling anxious or stressed, you can envision yourself in this safe space. And that's basically tricking your brain to feel like it's you feel like you're actually in that spot. So it's going to turn off that, that sympathetic nervous uh, system. It's going to feel safe. Your brain is going to feel, you know, feel a sense of safety. So that's that's one that. Uh, typically, um, you know, my, my students have a good experience with. So the next one, guys, we probably have about time for maybe one or two more. Um, this is more of a grounding skill. This is a skill that's, that's really good for panic attacks, if you experience panic attacks. Once again, this is the help. They're, they're called grounding skills because they're helping you ground it in the here and now. Um, a lot of times, once again, our anxiety, we're, we're focusing on thoughts, our thoughts, we're focusing on the future, we're focusing on, on anything but the present. And there's something calming about being in the moment. So this is another skill that you can, that you can use, especially if you struggle with panic attacks. 
So it's a simple exercise to center yourself and engage with your environment. This is something you can practice throughout your day, especially anytime you find yourself getting caught up in your thoughts and in your, in your feelings. So pause for a moment. I want you to look around and notice five things that you can see. So I want you to look around and notice five things that you can see. Listen carefully. And I want you to notice four things that you can hear. Four things that you can hear. Now I want you to notice three things that you can that you can come in contact with with your body. For example, with your watch against your wrist, um, the air on your face, your feet upon the floor, your back against a chair or your bed. What is three things you can you can you can um, you can come in contact with? And if it's something you need to get up and go get, I want you to go up and get, get up and go get it and feel it and really observe it. Really be curious about it. I want you to focus on that object that you're coming in contact with. Now, what, what is two things, two, I want you to imagine two things that, two things that you can smell in the moment. If you can't identify any type of smells, I want you to think about what would you like to be smelling in that, in this very moment, what would that experience be like for you? So what is two things you can smell in your environment right now? And then lastly, what is one thing you can taste? So if you don't have food readily available, what is one thing that you would like to taste in? Like right now, I would love a slice of pizza right now. I would love me a slice of, of pepperoni pizza right now. What would you like to taste? What would that experience be like for you? So guys, that's, a, that's another simple skill. Doesn't take a lot of time. It's just once again, helping you focus on the moment. Be present in the moment, which has been proven to work in fighting and combating anxiety. Telling your brain that you're, you're safe. You don't have to worry about the future. You don't have to worry about the past. You're just, you're just right now in the moment. You're enjoying the moment. That's a good one for if you struggle with panic attacks. So let's do one more. Um, this is this is a mindfulness based practice. Um, this is more of a meditation. Um, it's called a meditation on stopping the war within. I'm pretty sure you can you can actually uh, look this up and um, find it on Google or, or something like that. So once again, close your this is the last time you're closing your eyes for the day. And I want you to sit comfortably for a few minutes. So close your eyes and you're just going to sit comfortably for a few minutes. Let your body be at rest for these next two minutes.
Let your breathing be easy and natural. Bring your attention into the present. Sit quietly and notice whatever sensations are present in your body. In particular, be aware of any sensations, tensions, or pains you may have been fighting. Do not try to change them. Simply notice them with an interested and kind attention. In each area of your struggle, you discover. Let your body relax and your heart soften. Open to whatever you experience without fighting. I want you to let go of the battle. Breathe quietly and just let it be. Then after a time, shift your attention to your heart and mind. Now notice what feelings and thoughts are present. In particular, be aware of any feelings or thoughts you are now struggling with, fighting, denying, or avoiding. Notice them with an interested and kind attention. Let your heart be soft, open to whatever you experience without fighting. Let go of the battle. Breathe quietly and let it be. Continue to sit quietly, then cast your attention over all the battles that still exist in your life. Sense them inside you, yourself. If you have an ongoing struggle with your body, be aware of that. If you have been fighting inner wars with your feelings, been in conflict with your own loneliness, fear, confusion, grief, anger, or addiction, or anxiety, sense the struggle you have been waging. Notice the struggles in your thoughts as well. Be aware of how you have carried on the inner battles. Notice the inner armies the inner dictators, the inner uh, fortifications. Be aware of all of all that you have been you have fought within yourself, of how long you have um, had this conflict. So be aware of all that you have fought within yourself of how long you've been in this conflict. Gently, with openness, allow each of these experiences to be present. Simply notice each of them in turn with interest and kind attention. In each area of struggle, let your body, heart, and mind be soft, open to whatever you experience without fighting. Let it be present just as it is. Let go of the battle, breathe quietly, and let yourself be at rest. Invite all parts of yourself to join you at the peace table, at the peace table in your heart. Invite all parts of yourself to join you at the peace table in your heart. All right, guys, so that is all we have time for today. Uh, we didn't get to the self-compassion exercise called loving kindness for beginners, but that's something you can you can look up. That's readily available on, on Google, or you might can find a YouTube script for that. There's also a YouTube script. You can go on YouTube and find someone reading out these scripts in, you know, in, in very calming and relaxing voices. Um, each and every one is like deep breathing exercise. There's many progressive muscle relaxation exercise um, scripts on there too. Um, if you struggle with anxiety, um, 
you know, I, I run a group. It's called the Facing the Fear Group. Um, it's a group for people who struggle with anxiety. Um, so we do a lot of these. Um, we actually do a lot of these. So, and, and more. So there's more to this. I mean, there's more to more coping skills. This is just scratching the surface. Um, so if you struggle with anxiety, I encourage you to, to sign up for the group next semester or in the future. Thank you all for participating. I hope this was helpful to you. Um, and if you ever have any questions, you can always uh, call the Counselor Center and ask for Dr. Cordell Spears. And I will, um, you can just call me Cordell. I'll do my best to help you out. All right, take care.